Hello YouTube, today we're going to be talking about using dot product to find the angle between two vectors. So if you want to know at what angle uh, something is happening between the two vectors, um, this is how we're going to be talking about that. Um, so I'm just going to go over some examples and an application that I thought was really cool. Um, so here is the original formula for the dot product. Now if we're looking for the angle between the product of the two vectors, you're simply going to solve for theta, um, and then you get inverse cosine of the u vector times the uh, v vector over the magnitude of each and this is pretty much the formula we're going to be using when approaching or when solving for uh, the angle so here's an example this is just going to be vector basic mathematics here um, we'll get into the cool parts later in explanation but uh, to find the magnitude of each you simply square each term so the the j has a one in front of it as the coefficient um, you square each term you get the magnitude to be the square root of nine which is three then you have to do the same thing so you would have three squared plus zero squared plus four squared all square rooted and you take the square root which would be twenty square root of twenty five is five so you have each magnitude so now using the formula we can simply plug in the values that we know uh, and remember the shortcut for the dot product um, of each is simply to multiply each of the terms um, so two times three since they both have i plus one times zero because there's no j value for the v vector plus negative two which is their k value uh, times four which is the k value for the other vector um, you simply add those up and divide by the magnitude of each when you multiply them together and you get r theta to be the co inverse cosine of negative two fifteenths which is about one point seven degrees so we just figured out the angle between the vectors but this is just what it looks like mathematically let's see if we have a better application here now this is pretty cool i was really excited when i found this so uh, if you wanted to find the bond angle between carbon and one hydrogen atom on a methane molecule, which is CH4, um, so this is a tetrahedral with the carbon at its center. Center. Um, you should know that for basic chemistry um, with structural shapes. So that we can put this on a mathematical plane or a 3D plane. And since we know that carbon's at the center, and if we were to make this a box, which is what you could have uh, to show equal distance space and you can have a hydrogen atom on the respective corners um, but since there are only four molecules you have to pick uh, make sure they're symmetric and stuff you know the tetrahedral shape um, so the middle of the box would be the center of the molecule and we would have that graphically be at the point one half one half one half um, and then you, I put the hydrogen atom at the origin and then one away pretty much from everywhere else um, so if we wanted to calculate our u vector in this case, to find that angle between the, bo the bond, or to find the bond angle, uh, you simply figure out what that u vector is. So it's simply uh, 0 minus 1 half for each one, because it's for each coordinate, and then you get your uh, negative 1 half, negative 1 half, negative 1 half vector. Do the same thing for the v vector. I chose the bottom two because they were easy and they had zeros. Um, and there you can kind of see that angle between the bonds more clearly. Um, and then you do the hydrogen atom, 1 minus 1 half, 1 minus 1 half, and then 0 minus 1 half to get your v vector. Now remember, we're using this formula here. We're trying to find the, that angle between the carbon and hydrogen uh, molecule for that bond angle that is formed. So now we need to look for the magnitude. So if we were to look for magnitude, or first I guess we'll do uh, the dot product, which is in the numerator of this formula here. So remember the shortcut method, uh, again, every component, so the x component, or the i and the j and the k component, so you multiply each two and then add them up, so negative one-half times positive one-half, and you can uh, look at the rest, but then you'd get your dot product to be negative one-fourth for the shortcut method. Um, now we need the magnitude for the formula and you simply take the square root of each term for the, each vector after you square the terms and you get the square root of three-fourths, now that is radical three over two but we'll leave it like that just for the moment um, and then you do the same thing with your v vector since they're all plus or minus one-half and you square each term they're automatically going to be positive and then you take the square root and you get the same terms so now using this formula let's use what we have uh, you simply used our dot product portion um, to the shortcut method to get that negative one-fourth which is shown in purple here 
and we divide by uh, our magnitude of each vector. And after you multiply these two together, you would just get 3 fourths, so the square roots go away. Um, and then you get cosine of inverse cosine of negative one third, which is approximately 109.5. Now, if you know a lot about chemistry, you know that a tetrahedral molecule has a bond angle of 109.5, and we just proved it mathematically. So that's all I thought was really cool. I hope you thought it was too. Um, definitely, just really cool application of vectors and seeing how mathematics and science kind of go hand in hand. They usually do. So. Um, I hope this helped with applications and understanding um, how these sort of mathematics works in, I guess, the realms of chemistry and physics. So best of luck to you all.